Hello once again watchers of good TV. My name is Nick Pell and this is once again coming from my college dorm room. Now today I'm going to be talking about the show Betrayal. The show wrapped up its first season on January 19th and so I'm going to be discussing it. This is more than likely going to be also a series finale since the show is more than likely going to be cancelled uh, relatively soon in the next few months. So. Uh, yeah, we'll just see. And here is my review for it. I'll talk about the very last episode of the season after the credits to this video, so stay tuned for that if you want to see my thoughts on that. And, uh, we'll get right into it. The main star of this show is Hannah Ware. She plays a woman named Sarah. Sarah is this woman who is a photographer, a uh, very gifted photographer, and she is married to a man named Drew Stafford. Drew is played by Chris Johnson and he is a lawyer who is very devoted to his job, very headstrong about getting things done, and they both have a son named uh, Oliver. Uh, that's one side of this whole um, show. The other side is a man named Jack McAllister, played by Stuart Townsend, and he is also a lawyer-esque person. He is a fixer. Um, who works for Thatcher Karsten, who is played by Stuart Cromwell. And um, this is a very high up businessman. He's very old at this point. Um, he took Jack in as a child after his parents were both killed in an accident of sorts. And um, he has been raising him like a father, and now Jack works for him at the beginning of the show as a fixer. Um, Karsten is a uh, He's high up in the business area, but he's also a criminal. He uh, has his whole criminal network and it is kind of a well-known uh, idea in the city that um, Thatcher Carson is kind of a guy who can't really be touched. He has his hands in a bunch of different things, but there's never been really proof to convict him of anything. Uh, Jack is married to a woman named um, Elaine McAllister. She's played by Wendy Moniz and uh, she does a good job in her role. She is the daughter of Thatcher Karsten, so that's kind of their uh, relationship. And um, they both have two kids. So the main premise of this show is that Sarah and Jack, they meet... I have to kill the outside world. So the main premise of the show is that these two individuals, Sarah and Jack, they meet at this art gallery one night um, and sparks fly. They're both married to their significant others at this point and uh, they just <coughs> don't feel the same spark that they used to feel and then they meet each other and it's something completely different um, and they fall head over heels with each other. It doesn't just go right into the whole affair, um, but that is what the show is based around, is Jack and Sarah begin to have an affair with each other. And fairly quickly into the show, about uh, halfway through it, the affair comes out, people, um, everyone learns about it, and it's kind of dealing with the fallout of that for the remainder of the season. The really interesting thing about this show is that it makes you kind of think about uh, fighting for fighting for love a lot of the time because uh, we have these two people, Sarah and Jack, who are obviously madly in love with each other, but um, they have these other commitments and supposed roles that they have to play. They can't um, go after something that they want because they have these other commitments to these other individuals and these other jobs and professions and everything. So uh, it just makes it very interesting because I think myself and a lot of the people who watch the show um, felt like they were rooting for Jack and Sarah to get together even though based on modern day terms these would be seen as two people who are terrible people because they had an affair with each other even though they are immensely in love with each other and it's just a very very interesting um, concept to deal with um, and it's probably one of the things that kind of drove me to continue to watch the show week by week by week. The beginning of the season is actually fairly slow going because it's all building up to um, this thing and then establishing the roles of all these characters and giving backstories, the backstories of which are very, very interesting. And Henry Thomas plays T.J. Carson. He is Carson's other son. And he is believed to be the murderer of a guy named Lou who is um, Carson's brother. We have Drew going against TJ, so it's trying to convict him, and we have Jack who's trying to get TJ out of the conviction. And so these two individuals very quickly start going head to head um, in, without realizing that they have other 
things in common besides just this case. Without going into too many details, because I don't want to spoil anything for, for people who might not have seen the show yet, there are other betrayals in the show besides just the affair. There's uh, relationship betrayals, obviously, besides just um, Jack and Sarah. There are political betrayals. There are just various different things. People turn on one another very easily. In conclusion, um, I enjoyed Betrayal. I was a little bit iffy on if it was going to keep getting good when I started watching it and it was a little touch and go for a while, but about halfway through the season it does start to pick up and it does get quite interesting. It ended in a really good fashion though. Um, the last episode kind of tied up a lot of the stories because I think they're anticipating a cancellation um, of some sort in the future. They leave a very small cliffhanger at the end, um, which I'll talk about after the credits of the video. Uh, as a whole, uh, if this is the only season of Betrayal that we get, I enjoyed it. I thought that it was um, a good show. Uh, it was something that I looked forward to on Sunday. It's along with Once Upon a Time and Revenge. So. That's my review of Betrayal. It's on Hulu Plus. The whole season should be on there. Like, favorite, comment, and subscribe if you so choose. I'd appreciate it immensely. And remember, I'm going to be talking about the ending of the season after the credits of this video. So, stay tuned for that if you want to see my thoughts on that. And my name is Nick Pell, as always. And once again, my good people, keep on watching. Memory burns inside. You can't forget. You cannot fight or erase it. To tell and set it right You cannot run You cannot hide So face it If you are still watching this You are here to see my thoughts on the ending To Betrayal So this is the season finale episode um, Along with some bits here or there Of the penultimate episode So uh, if you have not finished season one of Betrayal, don't watch this because it's going to spoil a lot of things for you. Um, and I'm not going to hold back on spoilers here. So, uh, yeah, here we go. Now, the main thing really quickly I want to get to is that uh, Jack's son, Victor, is the one who shot Lou. And he, this was kind of a big surprise for me because I didn't see it coming at all. I thought maybe, oh, hey, TJ forgot it and then it's just repressing the memory or something along those lines, but no, it was uh, Jack's son, and uh, and then Karsten being the evil bastard that he is, he uh, basically tells Jack's son to go and shoot Sarah, um, which uh, his son does. He goes to the art gallery where her work is being displayed for the public, and he uh, puts two bullets into her. He does not kill her, however, which um, I was... Uh, a bit happy about. It would have been really interesting if they had killed off Sarah's character though, right there since she's kind of a central point of the show, but if it does get a season two that would kind of derail it. Now getting fully into the season finale, this episode went by a perspective by perspective character. The first person that I focused on was Karsten and uh, we see his whole empire falling down before him. Jack has um, spoken, he's been betrayed multiple times um, by individuals and he knows that the end is in sight for him. He knows that if he goes to prison, it's going to be for the rest of his life and he will likely die in there. So, uh, and he goes around to all the people that he cares about. Some people forgive him, some people don't, but he goes everywhere to talk to these people and then he goes to his headquarters and uh, shoots himself. And um, we have Drew who tries to go in there and get Carson before he does it, but it's too late by the time he gets there. Yeah, that was something I wasn't really expecting, and Carson is a very, very good character, and he's a very interesting character. And so, uh, the fact that if the show gets renewed, um, Carson won't be in the picture, uh, it'll, it'll make it quite interesting. And he was a he was a really cool character to see, and just see um, kind of the the reasons behind what he does a lot of times. Because sometimes he is justifying what he does, and it makes some logical sense, but he is essentially the bad guy of the series, and he is gone now. So, next perspective that we see is Drew, and um, that starts out at Carson's funeral, and then it goes um, into some other things. And um, first off, uh, first thing I was thinking is that Sarah is still going in there, and they're seeming kind of lovey-dovey 
in a lot of the aspects of how they are acting towards each other, and I found I found that to be a very interesting thing. And if they do a season two, uh, it would make for some interesting dynamics between um, Jack and Drew, um, just because they both are madly in love with Sarah, and uh, I think we see a Sarah. I'm kind of jumping ahead a bit, but we see a Sarah who's very conflicted. I think she is falling back in love with Drew, um, but she still has these hugely strong feelings for. Jack, and it's it just makes it a very complicated situation, and um, she has to try to figure out what she wants more than um, the other. And then another thing for season two involving Drew is that he might run for you. Oh, he is running for U.S. Congress, and that would be a very interesting thing, and uh, put in a bunch of other portrayals and make the second season a very interesting one. It wouldn't be him as a detective and a lawyer. It would be him running for office and seeing the betrayals and the scandals that are happening in that whole spotlight. So that would be a interesting situation um, to witness. Something which is really surprising is how quickly Sarah recovered from the shooting. Um, we see her walking about basically doing um, her job again really really quickly. I don't know, it doesn't really say how much time has passed in between these different perspectives, but it just seemed like it kind of took away from the immensity of the shooting itself because the whole season was kind of building up to it because it's the first shot that we see of the first season and uh, or of the first episode and uh, it happens and then it doesn't really seem like it's that impactful. They spend a very short amount of time on the shooting in general and then her recovery and then she's walking back and she's fine again. So I thought it kind of took away from the initial impact of it a little bit. And then we get to see TJ's perspective of things really, really quickly. This is a while after his father's death, um, and he goes to meet his half-sister, or, yeah, he goes to meet his half-sister, um, who is the daughter of Karsten's, uh, first love affair, and, um, that is, uh, that was a really cool moment. TJ, I think, is one of the main characters who has always had the good heart of everyone, um, because he was, he just always tries to do the right thing a lot of time. We saw this with Brandy, and then we saw this now when he was giving his money away, and he has his issues, but he's been probably the one of the central good characters of the show, um, and it's really interesting to witness. Um, and then he goes off to California for a little bit, so obviously if they do a season two, he would come back after spending however long there. And then we don't really get to see a whole lot with Jack um, in this episode. We saw him at the funeral during Drew's segment, and then we see Jack kind of helping Elaine move out, I think. Or maybe Jack was moving his stuff out, it's not really clear, but um, I think it was Jack moving his stuff out. And then we see him at his job. Um, his new job, which he obviously isn't enjoying nearly as much, but uh, he has these connections and he uses them to help out a man get his, uh, I think, six-year-old niece um, out of Africa and into America so that she can have a decent life. So, yeah, he's still trying to work his magic in a good way and trying to kind of give back uh, to, as he can. And then we have Sarah and I talked about how she's really conflicted between the two individuals, but uh, we have the cliffhanger at the end where she is at dinner waiting for somebody and then either Drew or Jack show up and we don't know who. And that's where it ends. So, um, like I said earlier, I think they needed to put something just in case they do get renewed for a second season. Um, so that they have something to go off of, but uh, I don't know. Like I said earlier, I, I enjoyed the show a lot. I hope that they do a second season of some sort. I just don't think it's going to happen, unfortunately, because uh, I, it didn't do that well ratings-wise, um, and it just doesn't seem like a plausible idea for ABC to do. So, we'll see. If you see a season two review at some point, you will know that there's a season two that happens. So, uh, yeah. It's on Hulu Plus right now, like I said before, so go check it out if it seems interesting to you. And, yeah, that's my review. Like, fair, comment, and subscribe if you so choose. I'd appreciate it immensely. Comment below what you thought of Betrayal. Did you hate it? Did you love it? Were you kind of in the middle? And yeah. Who did you think was going to end up shooting Sarah? Who did you think would end up being the killer of Blue? Um, all these different things. Yeah. As always, my good people, my name is Nick Bell. And, once again, 
keep on watching.